How's it going guys? Today we're going to show you how to install one of the door jam harnesses I make uh, into a CRV. First we have a table laid out of all the tools and equipment you will essentially need. Some things you can substitute with, we will get to that in just a moment. When you get the harness, you will have two things in the box. First you'll have your harness which has all white wire with tracers and then we have instructions right here. They're going to go through both the driver's side, how they're oriented, the, re the passenger side, and the replacement door jam. Things you'll need are a 10 millimeter Phillips head screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, strippers, cutters, crimpers, whatever your facets need in order to install. Here I'm going to be using one of these right here. This is an uninsulated butt splice connector with heat shrink. You can also use open barrel crimps with a crimper suitable for it if necessary. Then we're going to overslide it with heat shrink and heat it up with a heat gun. First we'll start, we're going to have to open the hood. In order to access the fender area, we're going to have to take off a few things. First you're going to have to take off the center grill. It uses a uh, flathead screwdriver here to pop off and then you'll have five, one, two, three, four, and then a fifth Phillips head screw. Here I'm removing the front grill. You'll want to use a longer than stubby Phillips screwdriver in order to remove the center screw, but the other four will come out with the use with a uh, stubby. Here it is using a standard size Phillips screwdriver to remove the final screw and pulling the grill off. Next we're going to remove the front bumper. The front bumper consists of five push pins on top. We have two 10 millimeter bolts down low, two Phillips head screws on the side, and then two screws right here as well. So there I am removing the push pins off the top of the bumper. If you have a push pin puller, I recommend it. I just used the flathead. It's what I had available to me. Now we're removing the 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom of the bumper. And we're about to remove the two two pieces of hardware on the corner of the fender. It is a little bit of a difficult to, spot to get to. If you have a stubby, it typically works a little bit better. And also, you may end up having to cock the wheel left and right in order to get 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 in the spot. Also, don't forget in the front corner there is the two Phillips head screws that need to be removed. Here I am removing the front bumper. I try to pull off uh, both sides next to the fender and get it outside the uh, fender area and then it should snap right off. Next we're going to be removing the side skirt which consists of seven push pins as well as two screws. They'll slide off and we'll be good to go. Alright here I am removing the side skirt. The push pins are a little old, a little brittle probably gonna crack them. Just take your time. I use the flathead screwdriver, usually pop them off. I did break a few. I do recommend replacing them. But yeah, it's just uh, the nature of the beast. Here I am removing the side skirt. I've got all the screws out. All I'm trying to do is wiggle it back and forth and eventually I will be able to push it forward and it'll come out. Next we're gonna remove the fender. The fender has eight 10 millimeter bolts we'll need to remove. Yeah. Two right here, three up top, two, two down here, up. one, and then inside the door two, and our final one right here. Also not stated, it may be a little bit easier to remove the headlamp. There's three 10 millimeter bolts holding it in place, and the fender well liner, I recommend keeping that attached to the fender itself there's a couple push pins and a couple screws that hold it on to the chassis all right so now that we have access here we're going to pull the boot from the connector you can see that there's green dots right there those green dots are essentially like uh, a button on your pants you're going to get it around those green dots and you'll be able to pull it off you can also push right here to disconnect so if you take your flathead right there pops right off what we're going to do is we're going to remove the split loom casing and slide that back as far as possible. It uses, they use electric tape on it and electric tape is quite old. So you're just going to have to remove the electric tape for it. And 
slide this out and push it back. Now that we got more area to work with, we can slide our boot that much further back. Make sure you hold on to all the connectors and conductors that are broken, because they will try to slide back with it. I'm gonna slide that back as far as we can get it. Next thing I'm gonna do, which I didn't show earlier, I did bring zip ties. What we're gonna do is we're gonna zip tie this as far out of the way as possible in order to prevent it from getting in our way and hindering us. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, we can start, we can disconnect this. This uses the flathead too. You're just gonna pop it off right right about uh, here. It's on the on this far side here. Pop that off, slide that back. And that'll give us access to our entire connector. Let's just show you how poor, poor um, these, uh, these harnesses are on our cars. Three have pulled out, I've pulled a fourth. If I do individual tug tests on these, we may end up getting more, who knows. You can actually see the wire is broken right here on this conductor, which can cause issues when it rains, potentially, things like that. But if I just generally pull on them, usually get usually get about four or five on average. So, oh, there's, there's a couple more. And uh, yeah, tells you everything you need to know. So uh, of this, of this, connection we have one two three four five we have seven conductors that were physically broken uh, I, I'd have to look up the resource to see what what those go to but seven is not a good number one is not a good number you want none so we're gonna get that fixed all right so we have our driver side door jam connector and then the replacement door jam tracers so what I'll do is I'll start I'll try to start with the connectors we have that are currently broken and determine where they're located at. So we have these, these seven here, and I'll just grab one of the seven. We have a yellow with a red stripe. So if I follow my diagram here, I'm just gonna look for yellow with a red stripe. We have B1 that shows yellow with a red stripe, as well as B2 with a yellow with a red stripe. Everything else shows just just, uh, it doesn't show yellow with a red stripe. So I gotta figure out if it's B1 or B2. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and try to determine if B1 or B2 is still active. B2 is still in the actual terminal. B1 is the one that broke. So I know that this, this wire is referencing B1. So I'm gonna connect this wire to B1 over here, which shows blue and brown tracers on the connector. So if I take the, blue and brown tracers on the connector. I'm gonna connect these two wires together and that will solve my problem. I'm gonna take my wire, cut it off. I'm gonna strip it. We're gonna to go to our, see which one will work here. And that worked. Take my terminal that I have in my locking ratchet crimpers, slide it in place. We're crimped. So I'll take my blue with a brown, slide my heat shrink over it. Set the crimpers up. And we're done. Slide my hand shrink over. Now I'm gonna follow this pattern until I'm complete the harness. So we got we got all our wires done. I haven't I haven't uh, troubleshoot tested them yet, but we're gonna test them real quick to see if our uh, all our wires work. And then from there, that's we'll be done. Let's put everything back on. You got the door locked. Is 
is already down. <laughs> we work there. Works there. Works there. I don't know what the speaker does. Speakers work. Check the mirrors. Oh, now I'm gonna put the uh, put the boot back on top. Pretty self-explanatory, but I wanted to film it just in case anybody had any questions. I'm gonna slide back, slide it over. We'll just keep pushing. Just keep on sliding. So the, these, these actually separate. It was easier for me to do that. Electric tape tried to give me a little uh, grief. But we're going to put the connector back on with the green cap over top. Slide this back on. There's only one way it'll go. It's going to be plugged to the top. There we go. S snap it back in place. Put our boot back on. 